Ghostly greetings, it's your boy Prue. We're going to talk about The Deep from Nick Cutter. Uh, let's get into it. This is recommended by Sarah at Sarah MG Reed. Sarah, you kind of gave me this book for one of my Hey, Pick My Neck book challenges. So Sarah told me, Josh, you'd love The Deep. It's dark, it's creepy, it's underwater, everything you love about life. Awesome. But I want to get into it because this book was fun. I just want to kind of get right into it. Let me scoop a little bit closer. Also, I got a little bit of the indigestion this morning. I just had McDonald's, so... All right, let's get into it. The deep basically starts, there's a plague on the surface that's whooping our ass. It's just completely leveling mankind. We do find out, though, early on during the plague, not in the book, this is all like five, five shit, that there's one item that can help us fight this plague, and it lives in the Mariana of the Trench, and it's called Ambrosia. It's like a oily, pinkish substance, the way I read it, that can help with antibodies and stuff to help fight people dying from the plague that's attacking the surface. The virus is called the Gets, which I thought was cool. Your main character, Luke, is one of the scientists' brother, and he was called down there to kind of help his brother deal with being locked up underwater and stuff, and more as you learn as the story progresses. But I don't want to get into that because that's spoilers. So for a plot, B+. Plus. B+. Plus. Solid. Almost A. It's a little tropey, but the way they did it, because Mariana's Trench and a Plague, but they did it in such a fun fun way where they did they tried to add hard science they wrote it in such a way where you kind of got what was going on made you feel smarter than you are and, and unless you're actually smart and then you're probably like uh but if you're like me you're like oh i kind of get what's going on so that's a solid plus on the thing characters though um i, I only finished this book a couple days ago and i'm already forgetting who all these characters are i finished this on uh saturday it's sunday so i finished this less than 24 hours ago about 24 hours ago, and I'm already forgetting some of the characters. I know Luke and his son and his brother, but the characters don't stick with you. They're cardboard cutout. I mean, they serve their job while you're reading it. There's no characters you're like, oh, look at this bland cutout. But there's definitely no characters that stick out in your head like, oh, shit, this fucking guy. He's the next Larry Underwood. No, he's not. He's not. He's not. There's nobody like that in this book. So characters, I got to give a C to. They didn't hurt the story, but they didn't help it. You're going to remember scenes more than you remember characters. Not the other way around. All right, pros and cons. Pros, it's underwater. So that definitely fanboys me up a bit. Uh, the writing is done good. Like, it moves pretty quick. You can go 100 pages, no problem. And it has different breaking points for the series. Like, part one, get to the lab. Part two, everything falls apart. If you like the movie The Thing, imagine that underwater. Cons, there's these fucking flashbacks. The Nick Cutter's got to stop with these flashbacks. There's a chase scene in one of the books, and you got, like, does he make it? Oh, let's have a flashback scene. Oh, no, I, I just broke my immersion. Like, I was on a plane when I started reading this, and I was like, oh, do I just skip it? Because I wanted to just know, but... So much of this book is done from flashbacks. We got like 550 pages. We could easily had a 300 and something page book that was just an awesome, quick, dark read. If you just cut out the flashbacks, man, the flashbacks, I get it what they did to the story, but it just kind of held it back. Or maybe do like the beginning as a flashback. And like maybe that's just part one and then a flash, the whole flashback and then go on with the story. But to part of the story, flashback part of the story flashback i didn't feel like i was getting anywhere oh that con hurt it hardcore all right so let's do it all the journey how was the journey of the book journey i read this on five parts the journey being the last part in my opinion the most important how much fun i had reading it oh how much fun did i have i had a great fucking time i'm gonna need therapy some of this stuff was twisted with the animals and the freaking viruses and the underwater decompression stuff Ooh, yuck reminded me of in horizon a little bit too take the thing meets event horizon underwater and there you go you got the deep the thing sphere of in horizon they have a baby the three people had a baby boom there's there you get the deep uh but the flashbacks do hurt this book extremely hard they hit this thing right in the face it's like i'm gonna win the flashback is like no uh, but overall, apart from the flashbacks, I loved it. The scenes were gross. Creepy, dark atmosphere, underwater. I loved it. Characters a little forgettable, and the flashbacks suck, which that's a Nick Cutter thing. If you're okay with Nick Cutter's writing, you're kind of okay with flashbacks. Definitely watch too much Lost, I think. 
my overall verdict for this is a solid B. The flashbacks keep it from an A rating, and some of the predictable characters didn't get it any bonus points. However, the setting, the, the how quick you can just burn through this 550-page novel, and the overall just creepy atmosphere and gross shit you're going to read, oh, it's so disgustingly morbid. Forget about it. That's been your boy, Prue. Stay creepy. And Sarah at MG Reads, thank you so much for recommending this. I, I let you pick this book out. I was like, pick a book. I got to let someone do it. I'm going to let Sarah. Sarah has good taste, and Sarah did not prove me wrong. Sarah was indeed hit the mark right on 100%. Sarah was on target. So thank you so much, Sarah. Stay creepy.